Today we will discuss the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. This chapter is entitled Devotional Service. In the previous chapter, Krishna concluded by glorifying pure devotional service as the most certain method of going to Krishna Loka. In this chapter, Krishna describes pure devotional service as the highest of all processes of self-realization. This chapter begins with an inquiry by Arjuna. Arjuna's question is, which is considered to be more perfect, those who are properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the unmanifested impersonal Brahman? Let me try to explain what is this unmanifested impersonal Brahman. God has three features. They are called Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. What is Brahman? Brahman is the formless spiritual light which is nothing but the spiritual sky. Paramatma is the super soul who enters into everyone's heart and everything in this world. Bhagavan is the supreme spiritual person in the spiritual world. Bhagavan has his personal spiritual planet in the spiritual sky. The spiritual world consists of many many spiritual planets in the vast unlimited spiritual sky. So Bhagavan among the three features Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan, Bhagavan is the highest feature of God and Bhagavan is the source of both Brahman and Paramatma. Generally, those who practice spiritual life, they are called spiritualists. The spiritualists are of two categories. The first category of spiritualists are the impersonalists and the other category of spiritualists are the personalists. Who are the impersonalists? Those who engage themselves in meditation on the impersonal Brahman, formless Brahman, they are called impersonalists. Then those who worship the Supreme Lord directly by devotional service, they are called personalists. Arjuna is asking a question from Krishna, who is in a better position, whether the personalists or the impersonalists. Now throughout the Bhagavad Gita, personal devotion to Krishna is recommended as the highest form of spiritual realization. Yet there are some people who are attracted to the impersonal Brahman. So Arjuna would like to know which of these two categories of spiritualists is more perfect? This important question asked by Arjuna will clarify what is the distinction between impersonal and personal understanding of God. So Krishna's reply is very direct. Krishna says, he whose mind is fixed on my personal form, always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith, is considered by me to be the most perfect. So in answer to Arjuna's question, Krishna clearly says that the personalist, one who worships Krishna directly in devotional service, is the most perfect. 
for a person who is engaged in devotional service and Krishna consciousness, there are no material activities at all. Because such a devotee is constantly engaged in some sort of service to Krishna. He may either chant Hare Krishna or sometimes he may hear some discourse on Bhagavad Gita or he may read some books about Krishna. Sometimes he cooks prasadam. Sometimes he goes to the marketplace to purchase something for Krishna. Anything he does, he does everything for Krishna. But Krishna says about those who are worshipping the impersonal Brahman, he says, those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, fixed and immovable, impersonal conception of God by controlling the various senses, being equally disposed to everyone and engaged in the welfare of all people. Such a person at last achieves me. Further Krishna says, for those whose minds are attached to the impersonal Brahman, advancement is very troublesome. So let us try to understand what Krishna is telling about those who worship the impersonal Brahman. They are trying to reach the ultimate goal by an indirect process. Simply by directly worshipping Krishna, one can reach Krishna. But this category of spiritualists called impersonalists, they don't want to worship Krishna. <clears throat> they consider Krishna to be somebody who is taken birth like ordinary person. So, therefore, instead of directly worshipping Krishna, they take up worship of the impersonal Brahman. Now, worship of this impersonal Brahman is a very, very difficult thing. Because to begin even the worship of the impersonal Brahman, it is said that one has to first control the senses, then one has to render service to everyone and then engage in the welfare of all beings. One has to ultimately approach Krishna because Krishna is the ultimate truth, the highest aspect or feature of God. And in approaching Krishna, one has to undergo a lot of tapasya, penance. In order to perceive the super soul within the heart, one has to stop all kinds of sense activities like seeing, hearing, tasting, working, etc. Then one comes to understand that the Supreme Soul is present everywhere. Realizing this, one gives up all envy towards other living beings. Because such a transcendentalist or a spiritualist sees no difference between man and animal. Because he sees only the soul, does not see the external body. Now, for a common man, this method of worshipping the impersonal Brahman is very, very difficult. Now, it is said that uh, the path 
of worshipping the impersonal Brahman is very troublesome. Why is it troublesome? Because <clears throat> this path of worshipping the impersonal Brahman involves so much of penance. First of all, one has to uh, control the senses and to control the senses, one has to stop all kinds of sense activities which are material. And then after stopping all kinds of material sense activities, the worshipper of the impersonal Brahman should try to differentiate between what is matter and what is spirit. Now to differentiate matter and spirit is very very difficult. It's a very tedious task. Whereas in Bhakti Yoga there is direct, simple, easy service to Krishna. So Krishna describes for one who worships Krishna directly, giving up all his activities, surrendering them to Krishna, being devoted to Krishna, completely engaged in devotional service, such a person, Krishna says that he personally takes charge of delivering him from this material world which is simply filled with birth and death. That means those who are devotees, they don't have to struggle to transfer themselves or to get out of this world. Krishna personally takes the responsibility. It is uh, possible only by devotional service to be sure that at the end of this life, one will certainly reach Krishna. Now, what does the devotee have to do actually to worship Krishna directly? There are varieties of activities. Whatever the activity a devotee performs, he simply engages in some kind of work which is done for Krishna. That is a standard of devotional service. And the devotee desires only to please Krishna by whatever activity he performs. He does not <clears throat> desire anything for his personal enjoyment. And the easy method for pleasing Krishna, for engaging in his service, is taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One simply has to devote himself in chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Such transcendental chanting attracts the devotee to the Supreme Lord Krishna. Next, Krishna explains there are different levels of devotion that one can perform devotional service. At the highest level of performing devotional service, Krishna describes that topmost level as, just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Lord, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live in me always without a doubt. So this is the highest level of uh, devotional service. Srila Prabhupada explains, 
one who is engaged in Lord Krishna's devotional service lives in a direct relationship with Krishna. A devotee does not live on the material plane. He lives in Krishna. What does it mean? Prabhupada explains when a devotee chants Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna and his internal potency are dancing on the tongue of the devotee. When the devotee offers some food to Krishna, Krishna directly accepts these eatables. And when the devotee takes the remnants of such food offered to Krishna, this is called Krishna Prasadam. So when the devotee takes Krishna Prasadam, he becomes completely spiritualized. So that's how a devotee who is directly engaged always in devotional service, he lives in Krishna. He doesn't live on the material plane. Then Krishna says, if you cannot practice or perform this level of devotional service, he gives an alternative. He said, tells, Krishna tells, my dear Arjuna, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulations of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, you will develop a desire to attain me. So what does this involve practicing the regulations of Bhakti Yoga? Srila Prabhupada explains, to practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, one should under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, follow certain principles. So Prabhupada gives a list of seven principles. He says, one should rise early in the morning and take bath. Then enter the temple and offer prayers. Then chant Hare Krishna. Then the devotee should collect flowers to offer to the deity. Then the devotee should hear Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. from pure devotees. Then the devotee should cook foodstuffs to offer to the deity and then take prasadam. Now this practice helps anyone to rise to the level of love of God. And then, when one is situated in love of God, one is sure to make progress to ultimately attain the kingdom of God. And next Krishna says, if you cannot practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Now Krishna is describing how anyone and everyone can do devotional service. It's not just only for those who are able to fully, completely devote themselves for devotional service. No. Even the others can. And Krishna is describing if you cannot do the topmost level of devotional service, then you can practice the regulations if you can't practice the regulations, he says, work for me. What does working for Krishna mean? <clears throat> Prabhupada explains that one who is not able to practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga can still practice devotional service by working for the Supreme Lord. There are many devotees who are engaged in the propagation of Krishna consciousness and they require help. So even if one cannot directly practice the regulations, he can try to help such devotees who are engaged in propagating Krishna consciousness. Ordinarily, people work for their own sense enjoyment. In devotional service, however, the work should be performed for pleasing Krishna. If one has sufficient money, he can help in building a temple or an office for propagating Krishna consciousness. Or one can help with some publication. There are various fields of activities and one should be interested in any of such activities. If one cannot 
offer the results of the activities like helping in propagating Krishna consciousness entirely, then the same person can still sacrifice some percentage of the result to propagate Krishna consciousness. This voluntary service to the cause of Krishna consciousness will help one to gradually rise to the highest perfectional stage. Further, Krishna says, if you cannot perform voluntary service, then Krishna offers another alternative. If somebody cannot offer voluntary service for the cause of Krishna consciousness, then one should sacrifice the results of any work that he may do and offer them to Krishna. So this is like the fourth level. The topmost level is completely dedicated to devotional service to Krishna. Then the next lower level is regulations of Bhakti Yoga, practicing or following regulations of Bhakti Yoga. Then lower than that is working for Krishna, that means offering some voluntary service uh, to help in propagating Krishna consciousness. And lower than that is sacrificing the results of any work that one may do and offer those to Krishna. Now, if somebody is unable to even sacrifice any results like this, then Krishna says, such a person should meditate on the super soul. What if somebody cannot meditate on the super soul? Then Krishna says, okay, if you cannot meditate on the super soul, then you cultivate knowledge, spiritual knowledge. What if somebody cannot cultivate spiritual knowledge also? Krishna says, one should sacrifice the results of his work for some good cause. Now, this is the lowest level that Krishna says one can do some form of devotional service. So, sacrificing the results of one's work for some good cause is possible by following the procedures, some of the procedures described in the Vedic literature. There are many descriptions of sacrifices. One may gradually become elevated by performing such sacrifices to the state of knowledge. Sometimes people, in order to utilize the result of their work in some good cause, they give charity to some hospital or some other social institution. This is also good because by renouncing a portion of the results of their activities, they will surely purify their mind. And gradually in the purified state of mind, they are able to understand what is Krishna consciousness. So in summary, Srila Prabhupada explains, to reach the Supreme Lord, the highest goal, there are two processes. One is the process of gradual development of Krishna consciousness. And the other process is the direct process. So which is the direct process? The direct process is devotional service in Krishna consciousness fully engaged in serving Krishna. That is a direct method. And the other method, the indirect method, involves so many different steps. At the beginning, Krishna says, sacrifice the results of your work for some good cause. Then one can come to the stage of knowledge. Then one comes to the stage of meditation whereby one can understand what is the super soul. Then one can come to the stage of sacrificing the results of his work for the Supreme Lord Krishna, understanding that Krishna is 
the highest feature of God, higher than super soul, higher than the impersonal Brahman. This will lead to the stage of performing some voluntary work for Krishna in Krishna consciousness and gradually one comes to the stage of following the regulations of Bhakti Yoga. This practice of Bhakti Yoga under rules and regulations under the direction of a spiritual master will surely bring one to the stage of love of God, the highest perfection. Now one may either take the step-by-step -step process or one may directly uh, follow the direct path. One may take up the direct path of engaging in complete devotional service to Krishna. Now direct process is not possible for everyone. Therefore Krishna is also uh, telling about the indirect process. But, Srila Prabhupada says, the indirect process is not recommended for Arjuna because he is already at the stage of loving devotional service to Krishna. Now, the Bhagavad Gita particularly recommends the direct method because in this age we are living in, People don't have time to take up the gradual step-by-step -step process. It's very, very slow and time-consuming. So therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, especially for people of this age, it is advised that everyone take to the direct method and surrender to Krishna and thereby quickly make progress to uh, attain Krishna. The remainder of the chapter, Krishna describes the qualifications of a pure devotee which endear such a devotee to Krishna. He says, one who is not envious but who is a kind friend to all living beings, who does not think himself a proprietor, who is free from false ego, who is equal in happiness and distress, who is always satisfied, who engages in devotional service with determination and whose mind and intelligence are in agreement with me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. So Srila Prabhupada explains, a pure devotee has got all the good qualifications. That's what Krishna will describe now. Of course, he'll describe some of them. He's filled with all good qualifications. He's never disturbed in any circumstance. Nor is he envious of anyone. Whenever a devotee is in distress or he is in difficulty, he thinks that is Krishna's mercy upon him. Now, how can one think that when there is difficulty, it is Krishna's mercy? So, Prabhupada explains that the devotee's thinking is like this. He thinks, due to my own past misdeeds, I should suffer far, far greater than what I am suffering now. It is by the mercy of the Supreme Lord that I am not getting the full punishment for my misdeeds. I am getting a small token of little difficulty. That is the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So this kind of thinking is possible only for a pure devotee of Krishna. Therefore, the devotee is always calm, he is quiet and he is always patient, depending on Krishna always in all situations. A devotee is also kind to everyone, including his enemy. A devotee does not attach much importance to the peaceful situation or troublesome situation due to the body because he knows very well that he is not this material body. He does not identify with the body, therefore he is freed from all kinds of false ego, ahankara. 
and he is equipoised both in happiness and distress. He is tolerant and dissatisfied with whatever comes by the grace of Krishna. He does not endeavour much to achieve something with great difficulty. Therefore, he is joyful. He is fixed in the instructions received from his spiritual master and because his senses are controlled, he is determined to perform all kinds of devotional service. He is not carried away by any false argument. He is fully conscious that Krishna is the eternal Lord, so no one can disturb him. All these qualifications enable him to depend completely on Krishna. For this reason, such a devotee becomes very, very dear to Krishna because Krishna is pleased with all his activities which are done in full Krishna consciousness. Krishna describes some more qualities of the pure devotee. Krishna says, He for whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anxiety, who is steady in happiness and distress, is very dear to me. Now, some more qualities being described here are elaborated by Srila Prabhupada. No one is put into difficulty or anxiety due to a devotee. Because a devotee is kind to everyone. He does not act in any way that will put others into anxiety. At the same time, if others try to put anxiety Others try to give anxiety to a devotee, then the devotee is not disturbed. He is always engrossed in Krishna consciousness, in devotional service. So material circumstances do not disturb him. Ordinarily, a person becomes very happy when something is very favorable for his enjoyment. And if there is some difficulty then ordinarily a person becomes very very unhappy but a devotee is not disturbed by external difficulties or favorable situations in all circumstances simply depending on krishna he is steadily engaged in devotional service Further, Krishna describes a devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, who is expert, who is free from all pains, who is without any cares, who does not strive for some result, is very dear to me. So, Srila Prabhupada explains, money may be offered to a devotee, but he does not struggle to get money. If automatically, by the grace of the Supreme Lord, some money comes, he accepts. Otherwise, he is not agitated. Regarding cleanliness, it is said, a devotee always takes bath at least twice every day. And he rises early in the morning for doing devotional service. Thus, he is naturally clean inwardly and outwardly. A devotee is always expert because he knows the sense of all activities of life. He is convinced of the authoritative scriptures. He never takes side of any one party. He is always neutral. He is never pained because he is free from all designations. He knows that designations belong to the body. It doesn't belong to him. Therefore, he is free from all kinds of bodily pains. Krishna further says, One who neither takes pleasure nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious activities, is very, very dear to him. Why? Because a pure devotee is beyond duality. In this material world, there is always duality. Sometimes there is happiness, sometimes there is distress. Sometimes there are auspicious conditions, sometimes there are inauspicious conditions. 
So like this, there is always duality. This duality cannot be avoided. As long as we are in this world, there will be duality. So a devotee learns how to be uh, situated in devotional service without being too much disturbed by dualities. So it is said, a pure devotee is neither happy nor distressed over material gain or loss. He is very much anxious to perform his service, but he does not worry about external material conditions. If he does not get what he desires, he is not distressed. So that way a devotee does not work with some great expectations for himself. He is always anxious to do something for satisfaction of Krishna. And this type of attitude puts him on the spiritual plane. He is not on the material plane anymore. Krishna further describes the pure devotee's qualities. One who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equally poised in honor and dishonor, who is uh, not affected by happiness and distress, fame and infamy, all these dualities, a devotee is undisturbed. He is free from contamination, always silent and satisfied with anything. Such a devotee is very dear to me. That's what Krishna says. So Prabhupada explains, what does it mean that a devotee is always silent? Silent means he does not speak any nonsense. Silent means he always speaks of the essentials. And the most essential speech is to speak about Krishna. So devotee, in this way, he is silent, that he always speaks subject matter connected with Krishna. He is patient because he knows that since he is devoted to Krishna, he is completely depending on Krishna. Krishna will take care of everything. Therefore, he patiently waits for whatever uh, service he does. So Krishna concludes this chapter by saying, He who follows this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engages himself with faith, making me the supreme goal, is very, very, very dear to me. So Krishna glorifies this path of pure devotional service and says that such a devotee who is completely engaged with faith with the goal of reaching Krishna's supreme abode, such a devotee is very dear. So clearly in this chapter, pure devotional service is described as the best or the topmost process of self-realization. And devotional service is the most congenial process of self-realization. Devotional service was specifically described in the last six chapters, uh, the seventh chapter to the twelfth chapter, this present chapter. Devotional service is <clears throat> the main subject matter of the entire Bhagavad Gita. Though there is also description of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, but it is very clearly established by Krishna while describing the other yoga systems that of all the yogis, the topmost yogi is the Bhakti Yogi or the one who is engaged in Bhakti Yoga, devotional service. And of all the practices of other types of yoga systems, Devotional service is the, is the easiest, the most effective and the best. So therefore, uh, at the end of this 12th chapter, it is concluded that devotional service 
is the most congenial form of yoga. Stop here. Hare Krishna.